around the bend to Kingston now as Queens University announces the appointment of a new dean for the School of Business. Meet Dr. Wanda Costin, who is presently the dean at the School of Business at McEwen University in Edmonton, Alberta. Our Jolene DeRosier sat down virtually with the incoming dean to learn more about the changes this experienced leader is eager to bring to the table, including a much needed shift in racial and gender inequality in organizations. Jolene? Thank you, Stefan. Yes, I am here with Wanda Costin. She is the incoming Dean of the School of Business at Queen's University in Kingston, and we're very excited to be with her today. So first of all, Wanda, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, we had a little bit of a conversation before we hit record, and it was such a pleasure talking to you. So there's three things that I want to hit on when we have our conversation today. And the first is the strategic direction that you're going to be taking once you enter Queen. So how will you inject yourself into this initiative? Talk to me a little bit about that. Well, thanks so much, Jolene. Uh, yeah, as you might guess, for all organizations, especially those of us in higher ed and post-secondary education, strategy is critical. Uh, but it's not for me to inject myself. I really view it as me adding value and contributing in new and different ways that perhaps aren't already there. The leadership at Queens is amazing. So really, I think the principal and the provost, along with the other senior leaders, are really figuring out how can we have a real impact, not just in uh, Kingston itself, but also in the province and across the world. What are the things that we're doing at Queens to educate the talent of the next leaders across the globe? So one of the things we talked about was, and I love that you said this, you want your presence and your vision to be more than just lip service. Absolutely. For me, it's always been about impact. That's my number one thing. What can I do? How can I rally folks together? How can I inspire others? How can we have some very difficult conversations about where we are today? Queens is an exceptional institution. It's very prestigious. But we must acknowledge that the way we've done things in the past is not likely to position us well for the future, particularly when we view ourselves as providers of talent. And in the business school, that's not just for industry, it's also for nonprofits and for government institutions. And today that means that our students have to have a different type of experience and be exposed to different approaches to learning, and then also help them to figure out, my goodness, how do we identify the systemic inequalities and inequities that have existed virtually since the beginning of time. Here in Canada, we're also really focused on responding to the truth and reconciliation calls to action, which really are about acknowledging the wrongdoing to the indigenous peoples of Canada and then embracing their approach to life and thinking how do we infuse indigenous ways of knowing and how we make decisions and how we teach and how we deal with conflict and disagreements so all of that is part of embracing a different way to educate and experience uh, with our students. Can we unpack that piece a little bit when you said difficult conversations? Be very clear on what those conversations are because one thing um, that we talked about was the racial and gender inequality in organizations. This has shown up louder and louder, especially the past two years, and necessarily so. So talk to me about what, what you mean by those difficult conversations. Well, sure. So we have to be aware, if we were to just look at the representation that we have amongst faculty, amongst mm -hmm. senior leaders, and if we continue to see in 2021 that the demographic composition of leadership on a prestigious campus like Queens is still predominantly white and or male, that's problematic because we know today, to your point, the evidence, the data, I'm an academic, the research we do illustrates and indicates that the best and brightest today are no longer just white and male. So when I engage with industry partners and recruiters, I ask them, I said, you know, I really encourage you at the end of each of your recruiting cycles to look at the demographic composition of your new hires. And if they're not diverse, and if they don't represent the population and the constituents and the clients and customers you want to serve, you're likely actually not getting the best and the brightest anymore. So what do we have to do to ensure that we reflect that? I must have at least 12 years of post-secondary education. I have never taken a course from an African-American faculty member. 
think about that. We can't continue to do that. We have to show others that there are opportunities for them. And we have to recognize that not all of our students who have potential and talent have access to the same degree of resources and supports that we do. So what are the processes? What are the materials that we assess? What data do we ask for? What information that help us to gauge who we think are best positioned to benefit from what we offer at Queens and in Smith in particular. So to me, that means we have to actually change some of those standards. Um, it's not just about how one performs perhaps on academic uh, standardized tests, although we tend not to use uh, too many of those in Canada. It's about how uh, did they perform in the classroom? Uh, what did they do outside the classroom? Um, and what do we ask for? Is it just a standard letter? Uh, that someone writes, or, or are we looking at interviews now that we're all very comfortable with these different types of technology and media to engage with people from afar? Um, people don't always have the money to come and visit to a campus. So I mean things like Michelle Duckworth's grit, perseverance. Once life experiences prepare them to engage in very rigorous and challenging situations, which is what you're going to find at Smith and Queens. We're going to challenge your worldview, your way of being, and that's gonna help you grow. So how do we identify students who maybe on the surface don't look like they're a fit, but actually possess the perseverance, the courage, and the stick to as I like to say, to persevere in a very academically rigorous, prestigious institution. Your passion is palpable. So I have a feeling when you step in July 1st is when you'll be at the Smith School of Business. The students and the faculty are gonna be very excited and I can sense the change. So first of all, good luck to you. And secondly, thank you so much for your time. And I think that WPBS Weekly Inside the Stories would like to check in with you again in the future if you're open to that. Absolutely, thank you so much for the congratulations. As you might imagine, I'm ecstatic about the opportunity and I look forward to working with you. Maybe next time it'll be face to face. That would be lovely. That would be absolutely lovely. Thanks again, Wanda. And thank you, Stefan. And I'm gonna send it back to you.